subtrop gain. Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So we're trying to find the shared moment diagrams for this crazy thing going on here. So it looks kind of complicated, but we're trying to find it for A, B, C. So it gives us a hint, and the hint is that we need to basically find the equivalent loading of D, E, and put it down here at point B. So to do that, we need to basically figure out everything that's going on everywhere in this beam and simplify it into one simpler force body diagram. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got this force body diagram here, and I cut out section DE because we're gonna replace that with an equivalent force. So this is gonna be force DE. And we can see that this is gonna be a three, four, five triangle, right, four feet here, and then this is gonna be three feet up. So this is gonna be four, three, five triangle. So we have this 800 pound force at eight, right? And then C, it's a pin, so we're gonna have C of Y and C of X. All right, so like this. So now we need to find out all these forces, so we probably wanna take a moment around C. So let's take some of the moments around C. You know, it's equal to zero, all right, equilibrium. So let's look, so we have this 800 pound force. It's gonna run and rotate us this way, which is gonna be positive 800 times its distance, which is 10 feet away. Right, so then we also have this force D here. So let's see, let's look at just the Y direction. So the Y direction is making us want to rotate counterclockwise, or clockwise, so we're not to subtract force D E. Now we're just taking the Y direction, so three fifths of it. And then its distance in the X direction is gonna be four feet. So then now let's look at the X direction of this. So pushing this way, it's also gonna make us want to rotate clockwise, so we need to subtract the X direction. So force D E times four fifths, so we're pushing in, we're seeing the x direction. So if we're going in the x direction, we need the distance in the y, which is two feet. I did not label that. Two feet, which is two here. All right, let me make sure I did that right. Yes, sir, I did. Okay, so if you do this, solve for force DE, right? You can factor it out, move things over to the other side, you're gonna get that force DE is equal to 2,000 pounds. All right, and then um, if you wanna break that into a vector component, Let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're gonna just take four fifths to get the X direction and three fifths to take the Y direction. It's gonna be 1600 I uh, plus 1200 J pounds. This is gonna be useful later when we draw it. I just wanted to make sure that that's how we understand it. So then now if we take some of the forces in the Y, right, we can, take, we can find that C of Y is equal to 800 minus whatever this is pulling in the y direction, minus 1200. So then you're gonna get that C of y is actually equal to negative 400 pounds. So we get a negative number, that means that we just drew C of y in the wrong way. C of y is actually pulling down like that. So then we can do C of x too. Um, so I drew C of x the other way, but you're basically gonna find that C of x is equal to negative 1600 pounds if you do it this way, uh, which means that it's actually pushing to the left. So that's just how we have to consider it. So now we need to draw another force body diagram basically of just this little rod here. Because we want to find, we found out what's happening at point D, but we need to find the equivalent force of what's happening at B. So let's draw this uh, little force body diagram. I guess we can do it right here. So this is that two foot section from B to D. So let's draw these, let's draw this force as a vector instead. Right, so we know that it's pushing 1,600 pounds in this direction, and 1,200 in this direction. And then at B, right, it's connected. If you're looking at this section here, it's not a pin or anything. So it's gonna have a moment and an X and Y component. So let's label this B of, y, or B of X, B of Y, and then the moment around B. So solving for these, pretty straightforward, B of X is gonna be also equal to 1,600 pounds. B of Y is equal to 1,200 pounds. And then that moment around B is gonna basically just be equal to 1,600 times two, which is 3,200 pound feet. And it's going this way. So now we have all this information and we have enough to draw a new force body diagram just ABD. So let's, or ABC. 
So let's do that. This is A, B, C. A is still going to have this 800 pound force going down. So then now we're looking at this. So we said B of X is pushing to the left here, but this is basically the segment ABD pushing on BD. So if B of X is pushing to the left here, it's going to be pushing to the right at B. So this is going to be, what did we say B of X is? 1600? Now we said B of Y is pushing negative here. That means that ABC is going to be pushing upward instead. We can think about that as like tension, right? This rod is holding this here, so that has to be pulling upward. So this is going to be 1,200 pounds. And then if this moment is going counterclockwise, the actual moment has to be going the other way around, just because it's the equal and opposite reactions. So this one is 3200 feet, pound feet. So then we have our reactions at C. So we said C of Y is negative 400 pounds, so C of Y is going to push down 400 pounds. And then C of X is going to be negative 1600, so negative, uh, negative 1600 pounds. And so now we can analyze this, and we can see that, yeah, this is in equilibrium. Everything's working out just fine. Uh, so now let's label this 6 feet, and then this is 4 feet. Okay, so we did all the hard work, and now we just need to find the equations for this. So I can kind of just go ahead and erase all of this. So take a pause here. If you need to write more stuff down, let's get rid of it all. Don't think I need anything else because this is all we need now is this force body diagram. I don't even think we need this anymore. So we're good. Yes, yeah, so we drew this beautiful force body diagram and now we need to work off of it. This is a positive now. Okay. So what are we going to do now? How do we do this? So we're taking our distance, right? Let's say we're working from the x direction. So our x is moving this way. So we need to find the shear at points a to b and b to c. We need to cut it up into the important segments. So we can see that a to b is going to be one big segment, and then a lot happens at b, and then there's going to be b to c where not a lot happens. So let's look at just that a to b section. So this is zero has been in between x and 6 feet. So let's take a cut, right? So here's A, and we're taking a cut. So we have this 800 pounds, right? And then let's draw our shear. So our shear is going to go down, and then our moment is going to be this way, and then x is going this way. So if we're fine, we're going to find that our shear it's just going to be equal to that 800 pounds, right? So if B has to be equal to negative 800 pounds, right? Because this is pushing down and this is pushing down. So by convention, B is to be equal to negative 800 pounds. And if we do moments, right, let's do some of the moments. It's equal to zero. So we're going to have that moment. And then this is also going to be a positive. So it's going to be plus 800 times its distance, which is x away. So we're going to find that moment is equal to negative 800 x. Okay, so then let's expand this into our next segment in between 6 and 10 feet. So now we're at B. And we have all of our reactions happening at B. Let's draw them out again. We have the this 1200 pushing up. We have 1600 pushing right. I don't think we need to draw this right because it's not going to have any effect on our shear and it's not going to have any effect on our moment. So it doesn't really matter if you want to draw this or not, but it's good to keep it in there. And then we have this moment, 1,300, 3,200 pound feet. So again, if we draw our shear, points downward, our moment points this way. So let's label this six, or not six. This is the this is the zero to six, so zero is less than x is less than six. So these are this, but now we're looking at six is less than x is less than 10. So let's draw our shear equation. Let's figure that out. So if we're doing some of the forces in the y, set it equal to zero, it's gonna be negative 800 plus that 1200 minus b. So we're gonna get that b, if you move that over, b is equal to positive 400 pounds. That's going to be another constant number. 
if we run through the moments, some of the moments is equal to zero. So let's look, we have this uh, 800 times x. Oh, so let's label this, this is six feet, and then this is x feet to how far we're going. So this is just gonna be 800 times that distance x. Then what else do we have? We have this 1200 pushing upward. Must be a minus 1200. And then what's its distance away? Well, it's not x, because if we count x, that's gonna be that whole distance. We need to take x, this total distance, and then subtract this six feet. So x minus six. Okay, so then what else do we have? Well, we have this moment acting here. So it's just gonna be, this is counterclockwise, so we're gonna subtract 3,200 pound feet. Uh, so let me double check this. Oh, and then we have to add our moment, of course, at the end. So let's see, did I do it right? 800x, 1200 x minus six, minus 1300 plus seven, yeah. So if you solve this for m, you get moment is equal to 400x minus 4,000. And so those are our four equations that we need here. And you'll notice that the moment is always kind of like the derivative of the shear. So that should be a nice confirmation that you're doing it right. So now we just need to draw the diagrams for this. Um, yeah, let's keep this. Uh, let's not keep this. Well, let's keep it. I like it. Okay. So the shear, let's start with the shear. The shear's going to be pretty easy. So this is x in feet. And this is shear in pounds. All right, so our first equation is just negative 800. So we're gonna go until six feet at negative 800. And then at six feet, we're gonna shoot up to 400. And then once we get to that 10 feet, we're just gonna come back down to zero. So this is 400. And then you can kind of just fill it in if you like. And there you go, that's our shear diagram. So now let's do a moment diagram. How's this gonna work? X in feet. This is moment in feet. Pound, right? Feet, pound foot. That's what I'm forgetting. Pound foot. Okay, so where are we going to start at? Well, our moment is a linear line at first, negative 800x. We're going to start at the origin. And we're going to go to 6, right? So we're gonna go down to a straight line to wherever we reach at six. And so what we wanna plug in is six to this x here to find out what this point's gonna be. Eight times six is 4,800, right? Am I crazy? No, yeah, so negative 4,800. So we're gonna end up at this point. Then we're gonna end up at this line here, 400x minus 4,000. So we need to find out what happens initially. We know that's gonna be a linear line pointing upward. So if you plug in six feet to that, four times six, you're gonna get, you're gonna start at 16, Right, this is negative 1,600. So we're gonna shoot up to here, and this is where we're gonna start now. And then we just plug in our endpoint, let's see what happens at 10. So if you plug in 10 to the x here, you're just gonna get zero, so we know we're gonna end at zero. So it's gonna be another linear line like that. So then now this is our moment diagram. And there we go, we solved the problem, right? It was a lot of work, it was a lot of statics, right? It was a lot more statics than mechanics and materials. But yeah, it's just anything, it's just a complication, just a big uh, mess of everything we've learned so far. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you still have any questions, feel free to check out the rest of my videos. Uh, leave any questions, maybe I made a mistake, ask me in the comments. Uh, yeah, thanks for your support, I'll see you in the next video, peace.